Welcome, welcome, welcome back. We have what you need on this depressing Tuesday morning. It's a PNC Lads podcast, episode 10 of season two. It's a really sad way to start the show. No, it's a, it's an uplifting way because I know their morning, it's it's early. They're on their, en route to work, wherever that workplace may be. And we're just here to lift those spirits, aren't we? It's true. Look at our fa- look, smile at the camera. Actually, they, they can't see the smile because they're listening in their car. But if you're watching, thank you for tuning in on, on YouTube because, uh, yeah, we appreciate both sides of our viewers, don't we? Eesh. But how are you, mate? You good? Yeah, I'm a little... My nose is a little congested. It's a oh, little, no. It's a worry. But it's been like that. We did go out on the weekend, so it could be... I'm still feeling a little bit fucking dusty like yep. in terms of like my energy is not all the way there. We'll get into the night out because it was a fun one, but a few of the boys in this house have had COVID-19. They've had, they've had the big C. So, um, And until the boy, one of the lads tested positive, he said it, I said it, you said it. You forget this thing exists, mate. Mate, I had no idea. I was, he goes, I tested positive for COVID. I kind of chuckled. I said, <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah. But yeah. then he goes... I look at his Instagram story, he's literally he has COVID. And I said, that that fucking disease still exists? Yeah, well, it's just like, um, it's kind of irrelevant. My guy's sick, that's just what it is. And what are you doing with that information? Yeah. That you've it. tested, it's it not going to change the way you um, the way you recover. Well, he said he didn't even feel sick. He felt one day he was a bit like down, yeah. just like a normal cold, but yeah. he was fine. Like he was, he was... um. Just, yeah, in the house, obviously, but just living his life. Got them antibodies in him, bro, from that first time. Yeah. He's, he's, he's living. Um, thankfully, I thought it was doing good I for thought us. I thought I was in strife. Yeah, because, I, I, you know, it's such... It's a big house here, but it's it's small and it's close contact within where all of us operate. The rooms... You can't avoid each other. You can't avoid each other. And, um, and I was worried for our safety and our health and well-being. I'm more so worried, like... Big up the immune system. If I get COVID, like you're fucked. Well, <laughs> like if, if <laughs> say you get struck down with an illness that just is, you're you're debilitated, right? Yeah. I'll be I'll be taking myself out here. Yeah, that's well, that's the thing. I mean, it will be good because the boys are going away, so we'll have a room now. But yeah, but like I, I, will, I will I would be taking myself onto the couch or just simply just dragging my mattress out here. There's no way I'm sleeping one meter away from yeah. from yourself when you're fucking dying. Um, but no, apart from that, um, it has been good. We did go out. Not sec- our second ever night out in Melbourne on since we've been here. Big night out too. Um, some would say overdue. I'd say that as well. Um, we've welcomed one of the boys who are friends with Seb and Will. Jacques. Jacques, the Frenchman. Um, yeah, we welcomed welcomed him here, open arms and. Um, it was looking like he wasn't going to have a night out in his stint um, in Melbourne. And then you want to say how it went down? Yeah, we're just sitting on the couch, mate. And I go, I go, you going out tonight, mate? He goes, ah, nah, the boys are, the boys are busy. They had to get their video up. Um, and, and I said, I'll go out if you want to go out. Yeah. And then he said, all right. He was quick with it. And I said, yeah. oh, shit, he really wants to go out. Yeah. And then he goes, I was like, I'll go see what door wants to do. He, was, he couldn't be asked. There's a few other boys. Couldn't be asked. Like I said, the boys were sick, so some of them couldn't come out. And then he goes, Oh, deal be keen. And they go, No fucking choice, man. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's not a world where I go, ah. <laughs> Yeah. There's not, a, there's not a single different parallel universe out there where Dill Buckley goes, Oh, no. You two boys enjoy. I'm just going to stay in. Yeah, no. Nah. Because I know what comes after that. You're a fucking loser, mate. It's that, but it's also the fact Why that like, would I? you're in you're in the house. So like, you're gonna be sitting here, with your tunes blasting, drinking. You, you're not, yeah. You can't say no at that point. No, it, it, what the only downside of it was when I found out. Um, I just had a really nice warm shower. I was in my yeah. in my nice warm trackies, and then they go, oh, you know, time to uh, we're going out. And you don't have a choice. <laughs> what I do like about going out here is the pre's. I don't know why. It's just, a, it feels a little bit different to back home, at least the more recent times back home because we just go the thirds in a bottle of vodka and you polish off with polish it off within the hour. Yeah. And it's you, you, like, we're getting fucking pretty buzzed pretty quickly. Yeah, well, the, the so yesterday, 
I just went to Coles to go get food. Uh, I wasn't going out, but Jux was going out again, and he he said, um, oh, I need to get some drinks. So he uh, and then on our walk, he goes, "Dude, Kings Cup's actually hell fun, eh?" <laughs> yeah. And I was like, "Yeah, Kings Cup is probably like the most fun drinking game when people drink and play the game to the rules. Like, there's nothing we we got flamed on a, on a on a TikTok we made, but when people when you don't drink properly in the drinking game but it's yeah. like we don't waterfall which for anyone who doesn't know that means you've got a skull and you can stop when the person to you next to you stops pretty much yeah and it's like if the first person finishes their whole drink they skull a can because they're trying like they want to hero it yeah everyone else says drink should be finished too yeah because like that's the rules of the game yeah but I- you have some people who bitch sip it and fucking just give their cup a kiss like yeah i've just come up with next week's draft draft um it'll be drinking games. drinking games yeah perfect yeah um no it and i'd oh, actually i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say what i was gonna say i was gonna say my favorite but i'm not gonna do that i can wait till next week um but no the when we've done it here um if you don't if they don't know the game the boys they'll learn and they'll adapt and they're not gonna bitch it and they cop and the it's been L. great fun and they cop the l too yeah they cop the like L. if you if you get stitched up because you didn't know the rule that's tough titties but drink it was a bit unfortunate the death cup we were all drinking the exact same thing yeah that. so it was just a really big um like sugar-free sun kiss vodka like it was unfor- <laughs> ideally everyone's drinking three different things in saying that though three player king's cup is genuinely like the most violent drinking game you ever do it's good fun you it get drunk fun. so quick yeah because you're you're firstly it's your turn every two turns yeah. And there's only three people to pick from. Mm. So <laughs> pick yeah. one. Yeah. I, we eventually had we fuck we're, we're all mates. getting into this, but we were all mates with each other. And it was like if Jux drank, I had to drink, which then meant he had to drink, which meant you had to drink. Yeah. It was just like we didn't even know who how many drinks each was owed. You just end up doing two every time yeah. someone drank anyway. Yeah. No, <laughs> like, it, it it was um it was great fun. Um in terms of where we went out. I couldn't really tell you because I'm not familiar with all these places. I can even run it down. So we went to the Espy, um, the Esplanade in St. Kilda. It's probably like one of the most famous places in Melbourne in general, but in St. Kilda, that's the go-to spot, the Espy. Um, so we rolled up to that. Got there reasonably early, so there wasn't much of a line, but that was my first time where this, the, there was another room that was open, like a dance, oh, the yeah. techno kind of different music room. It was very cool. Um, it, like a whole different extension to the SB, which was pretty dope. It was cool, but I, I I would have liked going back into the main room and partying there a bit more. Looking back, looking back, like that, it was it was good fun in there, but that main room, um, it's pretty nice as well. It's a nice, yeah, it's, it's a, a nice joint. overall nice place. But we um, we didn't stay there for a very very long time just because we, farted. Ooh, we no. got an offer to go, to a to a. To another really, really good place. The Emerson. The Emerson Bar, which apparently is like the new electric. Um, is electric term- dead, is it? Nah, but it's just very pretentious. Like, you get a bunch of wankers in there. Yeah. And uh, upper class, and they don't let guys in. But, well, they don't let anyone in, I should say, if you're below a six. And we roll up to there because we've been given a, a, a table code and, yeah. and a way to get into the venue and uh, we get there and um, they go, don't even know what that code is. Yeah. But we also heard... Which was a straight up blatant lie. Yeah. We also heard like 10 people in front of us use the exact same code. And I'm like, this is just, this is getting thrown around at this stage. Yeah. They apparently... Probably like a hundred plus people who have tried to use this code. Apparently there was like 60 people that used that code to get in, yeah. which would have been nice to maybe just to know. get told that it's not your code. It's kind of like... Yeah fucking you're probably not going to get in but it is what it is we didn't get let in there so we ended up trekking it from there we went to we went to chapel street which was not far away another famous fucking street in melbourne we went out there and we tried i knew we were getting in nowhere on chapel if you don't have chicks with you we've said this before you will not get in anywhere uh and that happened we went to electric no, sorry. Did we go to Electric? Yeah, we went to Electric and they took the eight chicks behind us who pulled up. Oh, yeah. They said, how many of you are with you? And the girls go, yes, yeah, four of us. And they go, yeah, come up to the front of the line. Yeah. Ja- Jacques was gobsmacked. He goes, you're joking me. Yeah. He goes, you are kidding me. Because we, yeah, they literally just rocked up and because they have a vagina. And tits. They were, um, they were in there like just as easy as that. 
Yeah, exactly. It's easy as that. Yeah. Um, but we knew that was going to happen. Yeah, I literally, I did, I literally said we're not getting in anywhere on Chapel right now. And yeah. long behold, that happened. Yeah. We um yeah went to went to electric no no then they said we're not letting anyone else in tonight and you just let eight people behind us in so we were, <laughs> I was like okay it is what it is we w- walked away from there went to the somewhere bar which is also owned by fucking electric and then they go nah we're not letting anyone else in tonight either so we walk away from there and we end up at the lucky cock which is just not an amazing place if you ask me went into there bit bit dead. And then we um <laughs> we tracked it to XE fifty four. Is this the one, is this one that at the end of the night? Yeah, they, they still wanted thirty dollars at three a.m. for That's, entry. That is criminal for a techno club too. And then we basically just laughed at him. We said, yeah. "See you later, mate." Yeah, this guy sta- like tried to staunch us. Yeah, this, this, he goes, "How many have you had?" I said, "I've had six, mate." Bl- blatant lie. Oh, yeah, of course. Had about six, three. Um, but I'm I'm like. You don't have to death stare me, son. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah I'm looking true. right back at him. I'm like, do you think I'm gonna vomit like right now? Yeah. Like I'm, I'm not gonna prove to you that I'm that I'm absolutely wasted. Yeah, hundred like, percent. Make make you call right now. <laughs> yeah. Make you call, mate. You they're got, not gonna turn us away. They want our thirty bucks. And he, and they're like, oh, you're from WA. What are you uh? What are you worried about thirty bucks? I said, because your club sucks, mate. Hey, it's three a.m. We're gonna go in for fucking forty minutes, champ. Get yeah. two drinks and leave. Yeah. No, exactly right. Um, um at the end of the night. We ended up at Macca's, um, which was good. But we bumped into three females. Oh, sorry. Three women. <laughs> females, bro. <laughs> we bumped into three women. And you can just, you know, once you're a bit older, um, you can tell what oh, age you know. You know, people bro. are, especially, especially women. <laughs> um, and these girls, <laughs> it was so funny. I don't know how we like... Well, Jux, just, Jux was ordering food and then they just kind of started talking to Jux. Okay. Um and then we all sit down and we're just eating our food, blah, blah, blah. And these lot are claiming that they're 18. Well, it's not even that. I, so they're sitting across from us. I go to the girls. I go, like, just from the way they were talking and shit. And this is the thing. Jux was kind of entertaining the chat. You and I were just sitting there like, I don't I, care for this at all. I was just happy for my food. And so I literally go over to them kind of with a bit of a stinky attitude a little bit. But yeah. I go, there's no fucking way on earth. You guys are 18. Yeah. And then they just turn, no, nah, we are. And yeah. then that's what you were going to say. Like they whip out their... They whip out, they whip out their, uh, their WA fake IDs. <laughs> and unfortunately for these three girls, your boys are... From, all three of us are from WA. Yeah, yeah. And we go, oh, oh, no issues at all. Let me just have a look at that for a sec. As I whip out my Real driver's one. license and I say... See the difference, sweetie? <laughs> yeah. Do you see the difference? And she goes, oh, oh. So I'm from Bayswater. Is that brokey? Yeah. She, she, she said a suburb and she was like, am I a pavo? <laughs> <laughs> and I was, said, deary me, love. Deary yeah, me. Fun. But it was funny because that would have probably worked with any other guys. Yeah, for sure. So PSA to all the blokes out there, be careful, That boys. was 17. And they've been going out clubbing for two years. Just be careful because... They were they they'd clearly been at clubs. This was oh, at yeah. three a.m. They'd been out there, um, and when you're under the influence, I don't think you can get in trouble if something happens and you meet them at a nightclub because you obviously you have to yeah. be of age to get into a nightclub. Doesn't make it right, but yes, you 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 will not get in trouble by the law because um, you just have to prove they have a habit of lying. You just say they lied to you. They lied to get into this club. They have a fake ID. They have a pattern of lying. Case yeah. dismissed. But yeah, be careful out there, lads, because there's um. There's some devious people out there. Oh, of course. And and this is the thing. Like they, if something was to happen, like you did sleep with those chicks or whatever, they're not going to do anything. Like they've done oh, that. No. They've done that a few times. Let's be honest. Yeah. Like they're not, they're not the type of people to go rat out to the cops saying I got fucking whatever because I'm underage. Yeah. They're not going to do that. They know that they've, that what they're doing was wrong. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. Um, was a cold night, but overall was a fun one. Um, and yeah, glad we went out in the end. It was um, it was good fun. The only problem with Melbourne spontaneous nights is if you don't plan to have women with you, you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. And one like that was we 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 cooked it. Yeah, we did cook it. Um, but it was still lit. So that closes out that we've got a vlog out right now. It's um, it's our most recent video on the PNC Lads Vlogs channel. Go watch it. Go Top watch link in it. In the description, it is our the best concept we've come up with for one of our videos. Um. It's got the boys in there from this 
and this is actually one of the main things from the vlog. It's a Chucky Dan chocolate bar. For anyone Got, who knows Misfit Minds. Yeah. This is iconic. Chucky Dan. We we made chocolate bars for Chucky Dan. So go watch the video and the process and how that unfolded. It's lit. Yeah. I mean, look, just look at it, Ev. It looks very, very professional. I, I showed my family. I, sh- I mean, we showed so many people, so many randoms. And everyone who's seen this has absolutely fallen in, fallen in love with it. Because, bro, you don't see that type of a bloke on the front of a Chucky bar, do you? No, you don't. It's actually really good marketing. It is fantastic. Um, I know super proud of this super proud of what we're able to create here uh, but no go check that out it's um it's probably one of our best videos and let us know what you think of it so those listening on on spotify or apple go to youtube pnc lads the vlog channel check that out it'll be in the description of this podcast if you can't find it 100 um, percent. another thing from the night out is actually so funny this mm-hmm. random well i actually don't know she we met at the SB and she put her fucking number into my phone. Like, I don't, I don't really remember what happened, but she put her number into my phone, which was actually quite funny because, well, based, this is her words, not my assumption. Her, she had a gay best friend there, like a gay guy there who was her friend who was also with another girl. And then she, <laughs> he comes up to me and they tried to play like the, like the, that's my girlfriend card. And like as in to oh, intimidate me. Oh, true. And I literally like <laughs> this this gay guy like goes up, comes up to me and goes, Oh, that's my girlfriend, eh? Like kinda like trying to like size me up in a way. And I'm not even kidding, bro. Never been less intimidated in my life. Like I literally I kinda laughed at his face. I said, Are you seriously trying to play that right now? Yeah. And then um she comes back and goes, Oh, that's my gay best friend. We're just trying to play like the the um like oh that's my that's my girlfriend card kind of thing blah blah but she put her f- phone number into my phone and um i sent her a message and then she goes oh, i have a boyfriend and shit so <laughs> like you know what I, you know what these women do they're just they're, they're just trying to have some fun on a night out they're like, oh, how can i be entertained bro let, let me mm, let, me, uh, let me muck around with some uh with some with some bloke and this and that um obviously Guys do it too, but yeah, people people on nights out there are. If your significant strange. other goes out without you, they cheated on you. No, I'm kidding, but they, they are strange. <laughs> um, but something we just did, we just booked our tickets to go to Sydney. We did. Never been to Sydney myself. Neither has Evan, and I know we've got a lot of New South Wales listeners slash watchers out there. Oh yeah. So if you're from there, we are there. We get there on a Thursday, and we leave on a Monday. First of June. 5th of June, that's how long we're there for. If you have parties, if you have any places, clubs to go out, let us know. We're down. But not just that. We need recommendations on what to do during the day for those days. Because drinking and all that, it's great fun, obviously, yes. But that's a nighttime thing. And I actually want to go experience Sydney for the short time I'm there. Um, So, yeah. Must-dos in a short amount of time in Sydney. Please let us know. Um... Very excited. We're going to go with our mate, Zach. Zach Denholm and Jared Moore, our two best mates, or two of our best mates, they're coming to Melbourne as well. Haven't seen those boys since February. Yes, yeah, sure. So it's going to be very exciting to have the fellas over here. And I, 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 to my knowledge, we're all single. We are all single. So the, the wolf pack is back together. <laughs> the wolf pack. The first time that's ever happened in six years. I don't think we've ever been out on a, to a nightclub where all four of us... No, never. Single, never in our lives. Well, Jared's been in a row. Well, yeah, since was. Jared was in a... Yeah. Um, so that's going to be... It's oh, going to be very fun. Watch out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look out, Melvin. It's going to be It's going to be a great... All I know great, is I'm going to pre-plan. I'm going to... Like, we're going to have to like get a table or something in one of these clubs. If we've got... Wait, People out there, if you've got the plug, let us know. Yeah, we need we need some hookups. L- let us know. And don't give um, me no dodgy code with fucking 700 people using it. And also, if you're from Melbourne, let us know the things that we need to do during the day to show our mates a good time. Facts. What what are, what are some things that we can do? Um, fuck up, cat. <laughs> um, yeah, let us know. Let us know. So that, I'm very excited for that. Very excited to see our mates. Hot topic question, Dil. <laughs> Would you play a hand of blackjack for a billion dollars or take a million dollars right now? 
I'd take a million dollars right now. Really? Yeah. Over a blackjack hand for a bill? Yeah. Ooh. Let's play. <laughs> See what you would have happened. This is going to be tough for the... Uh, Audio list. Yeah, but I'll just explain it in numbers. All right. All right, this would be your card. Yeah. My card. Yeah. Your card. Yeah. So Dill has an eight and a five. Yeah. And then I have a 10 and a face down card. So you yep. got 13. Are you going to hit? For those listening on audio, I've just hit. So Dill's just gone. Just and bust. You've just busted. So yep. you're, you're a million dollars richer. If yep. you hadn't have flipped... You would have lost anyway. So Dill made a great decision, boys and girls. I made a. I'm sorry. You can do so. You can set yourself up with, with a mil. It's just. It's not worth the risk for such a game like Blackjack. But if you had a one, you would have been like, damn. Oh, of course. I mean, <laughs> you want you want what you are, what you could have or can't have. But no, I'm million dollars richer. Thank you very much, Ev. Thank you very much. Right, um, let's get into a segment. Do you want to do? What do you want to do first? I don't mind, mate. I do not mind. I've got three oddly satisfying things. I don't have to use all of them. Yeah, we can do oddly satisfying but things. But we let's do oddly satisfying things. <laughs> all right. Um, this first oddly satisfying thing, I know everyone is going to relate to this. And everyone is going to agree. This isn't a controversial one. So, when you wake up, and you think you have school or work that day, but then you realize that it's actually like a Saturday morning as opposed to a weekday, that is the most oddly satisfying thing. Have you ever done that where you you were in such a deep sleep and you gen, you almost don't know where you are? You wake up, you're like, what the fuck? And you're, you're already like pissed off because you have to go to school or you have to go to work. And you get up and then you check the phone and you go, no fucking way. It's Saturday morning. It's Sunday morning. I feel like it's one of the best feelings. It's like that happened to me back, like when I was a little boy. Yeah, it's but, happened to me before. But now, like, I, I don't, that hasn't happened to me for like six years. I kind of know my schedule. You have to no, but you have to have had like a real fucked sleep where you were just so deep in it. Yeah, it's crazy. But no, that that one's uh that one's mine. It it hits different. It is a good feeling. It's like for people in America, I always see like when they wake up and it's a snow day or whatever, and they've all been snowed in, and you have yeah. to like you just. Literally wake up, play PlayStation all day. Yeah. Um, my oddly satisfying thing. I'm not sure if I did this one, so I'll just say it anyway. But um, when you're like on a holiday and you get paid, I feel like did I do that one? I don't think so. Well, I think there's no better feeling than or satisfying when you're on holiday. You're in Bali. You know, you're soaking up the rays. You're in Hawaii. You know, you're on a night out. Yep. You're hungover, and then the paycheck rolls in. Yep. And you're you're not even at work. No. You haven't been at work for a week. Annual leave comes in. Cha-ching. No, that is a, a, that is a great one. It is a great one. We, we've both experienced that. Um, you're just like, oh, just getting it for being a good oh, person. Dude, it's the best. It, it really is. Um, my second oddly satisfying thing. When you order something and your package is delivered by... Your package is delivered... And it gets dropped at your door as opposed as opposed to it being taken to a post office or a like DHL service provider. It's so, so satisfying. Because there's nothing worse when you get that notification and it says, Oh, your package is coming today, blah, blah, blah. And say for example, you're in the shitter or you're in the shower and you you're at home but you've missed it. Yeah. And the bastard doesn't leave it at your front door or in a hidden spot. And now you have to wait maybe to the next day or four hours later yeah. to go get your package. When you're home, it's the worst. Oh, so frustrating. Like I've, I've, like my old house used to have a gate on it, which we would leave open. Yeah. But people, they wouldn't even bother. They am not yeah. even. They would literally just like, ah, huh, not gonna bother walking up to that door and chuck it. I'm just gonna chuck a little note in his thing and take it back to the post office box. It's easier. Yeah. And it's like, he's serious. No. I'm literally home. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's. It's very satisfying when your package is just at your house and you are, yeah, there's no effort required. You know what I reckon is another like satisfying thing? It's not really written down, but so when you get your package rocks up, say like you've ordered something, mm. you go and, say you ordered a new pair of jeans yep. and the package isn't estimated to come until Monday, but then it rocks yeah. up on Friday afternoon yeah. and you're just like, yes, I can wear these little fuckers 
yep. tomorrow when we go out and you're just hyped as fuck. I reckon it's the greatest thing. No, when the package does come early, that's... But, that's but in really particular, cool. like on the Friday... Because you know you're not getting it until Monday otherwise. Yep. And if you, whatever, usually you want things for the weekend. It's like when you can use them. Yeah, but no, 100%. My second oddly satisfying thing, <laughs> this one's a little bit of a freaky one, Ooh. but it's kind of good because it'll roll us into the next topic. But um, when, you, when you open up the hub, you're in that mood, you open up the hub and then like you just find a phenomenal video. Instant. And it, you, there's no there's no search and there's no going to tab 644, 655, trying to find a, a great video. You just, that's this is the one, bang, and it's great. Yeah. No, that's, um, I think yeah. that'll probably be relatable for everyone. And that's there. on addiction. Yeah. I don't know. It's <laughs> tough out here, boys. It's tough. It's tough. Uh, I found, Abby sent in a, 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 like a listener sent in one if you want to do it. It's quite good. I actually like it. Do you have it? Yeah. Uh, so Abby sent in, it's like when you're driving. Driving along and you are, uh, and, and you know, you know, when, when the traffic lights are green and in your head, you're thinking this is going to, this is going to cook me here and we're going to have to, we're going to have to break hard. Happened the other day. But when you're just driving along and it changes orange as you're like in the intersection. Yeah. One of the most satisfying things of all time, because you've just gone, I didn't cop that red light. There's no risk. I didn't have any anxiety about whether or not it's going to go red or not. Yeah. And you just cop a good run. Yeah. It's one of the most satisfying things. 100%. Of all time. We're driving the other day and fucking stupid Melbourne roads. There's like two sets of traffic lights, one here and then one there. Like they're probably a hun- like 50 meters apart from one another. And the first one, oh, they turn orange and that was a risky pull. But then there's not a lot of space. You know, I've sped up to beat that orange. But then I've got the other set of traffic lights and I'm like, well, I'm cooked there. And then you have to break hard. So it's it's not ideal. It's far from ideal. So when that does happen, boy, it's satisfying. Satisfying. But going back to the hub, I think that can roll us into the uh, bedroom blunders. Oh, yeah. yeah, we've only got the one sent in this week. So if you guys want yours featured on the show, send us a DM. Yeah. Um, so uh, a woman name. Um, Genevieve. Okay. So Genevieve said, bit of a bedroom blunder. Please keep me anonymous. Being on a few dates with a guy before and we end up back at either of our places. We're doing it at his and I ask him to stop because it hurts. When he says why, I explain it's just a thing that happens to me sometimes. He blows up shouting saying, I should have told him sooner. Like you should have told me on a previous date. It's unfair. You've wasted my time. Blah, blah, blah. She said, for reference, I'm still able to have sex just to, I have to avoid certain positions. He kicks me out and while I'm still getting dressed, he opens his bedroom door and both of his parents are standing there shaking their heads at me. She goes, I'm still not sure why they were shaking their heads at me. Also, do I need to disclose that on an earlier date or did he overreact? Overall poor experience. Cheers. I replied saying, damn, that's fucked. We shall discuss. Um, I've actually experienced something similar in like for myself, um, where like girls, um, some girls, I don't know what it, it's like, it's some disease. I was talking to some, not a disease, but like something with their vaginas where I don't know, just start, starts hurting or some shit. I, it's not, it's not uncommon. I'm pretty sure. Um, but no, I, I think like that's, I said to you, it's fucked up. <laughs> that's just a, uh, the ship bloke. If you, if you've ever heard of one, if you've ever seen one, um, You've dodged a bullet there. Hundred percent. The fact that I thought like the first part was okay, like still messed up him being like cracking it at you for something that's not really it's not your fault. <laughs> like that's like a girl being like "fuck you, you piece of shit" because your dick's not hard. Yeah. Like that's yeah. It's just whatever. It's something happens during sex. The fact that his parents well, were stand like were there like as you're leaving his house and they're like they're like you're a joke. I reckon she would have. They would have heard him yelling. I reckon they're low. They're low key shaking their head at their son, and she's just like, put her head down. No, nah, I don't reckon. Out, I reckon. No, nah, because Bro, what parents are going to be doing that? Some parents who raise their son to do that. If your if your son's willing to do that, where they learn that from? Oh, I don't think that's true at all. I think for sure, like night, like fucking most 
kids' behaviour, that were young people's behaviour, is dictated by what their parents did. Of course, but not all of them. And um, you see that in many different instances that aren't sexually related. I saw a TikTok the other day. Literally, fucking, um, these parents were interviewed after their kid became a uh, shooter. And it was just like, you could tell these parents were literally like, Two of the nicest humans you will. Yeah, but they're mentally. That's and a it, mental illness, though. Oh, of course. But th- this guy's obviously fucking somewhat mentally unstable as well. If he's got anger issues to the point where he's blowing up like that, so it's not all, in my opinion, relevant to uh, who their parents are. But no, that's a um, that's a cook situation. Do you have to tell people Fuck before? No. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> you tell them if, like you have a conversation before you get started. I would say, like, just like you. You have your do's, you have your don'ts. No, but so, like, so this is the thing with this type of, I don't like know the words, but for like the vagina, basically, it's not, it's not something that happens every time. So like it's, you, she can have normal sex, but then if, if it starts to hurt, it's like, don't do doggy. Like that's what I've had before where they're like, I can't do doggy because I actually will hurt me. Yeah, of course. But that's what I'm saying. Like, So he, she doesn't have to disclose that even before they have sex. Midway through sex, she goes, oh, this is starting to hurt like she did. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. No, um, but I'm just saying like you can say it beforehand so then, you, you know, they're aware and they're not just going to fucking try and destroy you basically and there's a heads up there and um, like clear communication is literally just clear, is key. It's up to you though. It's you definitely preference. don't have to say, mate, if, if a girl told me like on the first date we're having a coffee and she goes like, no, hey, I can't, I, I'm not saying that's what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, go man. on, go on. Fucking hell, mate. <laughs> I'm not coming at you, brother. Go on. Um, yeah, so, and she goes to me like, oh, yeah, you, you can't fuck me in doggy style. On the first date, I'm thinking, you're a weirdo. Yeah, but my point was don't say it at the coffee date. Say it like you're about to have sex. That's my my point was no up. relevance to yours. Yeah, but that's, I mean, I 100% agree with you. That's not the time or place to discuss that whatsoever. Um, but yeah, like we said, you've dodged a bullet, love. Count yourself lucky. Could have been worse. Could have happened on your first, on your wedding night. So, you know. Let's do, this is what I'm really passionate about. We're going to get into the draft segment. And it's childhood TV shows. And growing up, I was a big Foxtel child. Um, lucky, lucky enough to have that. And this is going to be tough to pick the top five. Very, very hard. People have got their own opinions. People like their own shows as well. I think there's some universal ones that are just... Everyone liked them. It's all relative too because like... It's like you're sitting back now. I feel like as a kid, you almost like every show. <laughs> like, it's like it's TV. You, you know, like shows are just good. So it's hard to look back and be like, I would still love that show if I was like back then. I don't know. It's kind of weird to put into words, but we can get into it anyway. We got to hit a little paper, scissors, rock action. As we always do. Paper, scissors, rock. Paper, scissors, rock. Wins again. I will start with my pick one. And like I said, it's tough. It is tough out here. I have to say, this was the first ever show I watched growing up. And it was my love for... It was yeah, the beginning of my love for TV shows, specifically on Foxtel. Um, my pick one is Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Um, yep. Absolutely clear. It was on for so long. It There was a lot of people growing up where they preferred Sweet Life on deck, but that's because they grew up and they never actually watched Sweet Life of, of Zack and Cody. Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, that's my pick one. Clear for me. Yeah, that was, a, that was definitely in my list. Um, my pick one that I'm going to roll with, I used to binge watch this show like every time I was on. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's another Foxtel exclusive, but Zeke and Luther, I used to love this show, bro. It was about like, they had like skating. It was kind of similar to the, to the bands that like Sweet Life of Zack and Cody would have where like, like in terms of both just that young kids kind of going back and forth, but Zeke and Luther were just too... I don't know how old, but like teenage kind of vibe and they would just ride skateboards and shit and just do stupid, stupid dares really, which yeah. was kind of what my childhood was anyway. Yeah. So. No, I, I watched a bit of that. Um, I wasn't actually too much of a fan, um, but no, that was, I do remember that one. That was, a lot of people liked that. 
Um, my pick two, once again, it's extremely tough. My pick two is probably going to be iCarly. Um, really good one. Yeah, great show. Really, really good one. Um, watched it from start to finish. Um, yeah, it was just so good. I can't really say too much other than it was just fantastic. This is what I'm saying. Like, it's very hard to put into words why you liked it because, like, you were just young. You don't like if you were to watch them now, you would hate them. Oh yeah, <laughs> like that just because it's, diff- it's a different time. They're not. They're not. But also, they're just not designed for a 23 year old. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, fantastic show. That's my pick two. My pick two is going to be Finney's and Ferb. Yeah, it was on the list. Great show. Not really much to go into. Yeah, I just watched what I watched. <laughs> yeah, their, their intro was sick. Their intro theme song was absolutely sick. Um, my pick three is going to be Wizards of Waverly Place. Um, when when well, when I was first introduced to a, a young Selena Gomez. Oh, <laughs> dude, Pang. That's that's the first time I I started to feel things as a, as a child. Yeah, you she, know, was, the, she was bad. Uh, she was she was amazing. Yeah, but also it was just a fantastic show, and for one to go on that long, you know it was good. You know it was good. That was a several year jobby. Um, that is my pick three. It was yeah, a fantastic show. Yep, great show. This one's different, but it's coming out of the woodworks, and I'm gonna go with Ben Ten. That was on my list as well. Ben Ten. That fucking shit was lit. Yeah, you you were either a Ben Ten kid or you weren't. Yeah, Ben 10 was lit. Fucking little on the Matrix. Yeah. Change into whatever you want. Who doesn't want that as a kid? No. The, I the, want that now. The Yeah, I used to have like the watch as well. You <laughs> yeah. play around as if you were Ben. Um, the movie was sick as well. I love that shit. Yeah. Um, my pick four. My pick four is going to be... It's going to be Drake and Josh. Um, that one was really good for me. It was actually the same. I had Megan who was on... Um, it was on iCarly. That one was on for so long, and it's pretty, pretty uh, funny to see. Like, not funny, but pretty cool to see like how much they changed. Well, David Dobrik had um, Josh, Josh in his Josh Peck like, vlogs for ages. Yeah, um, no, that one was fantastic for such a long time. Again, Nickelodeon won that, that show. Um, great show, great one. Pick four. Um, see, this is the thing. I have shows that like. Uh, mainstream shows that I used to binge watch like I used to binge watch I'm just going to roll with it I Beyblades bro oh, I yeah. used to watch this show my brother like was a bit older than I am so it kind of got me into it but uh, this I don't even know how many seasons and episodes this show had but bro it was literally like Pokemon mm. in a way but like I watched this show from start to finish Interesting. had all the Beyblades in real life like we'd have fucking Beyblade battles yeah yeah that was, shit was crazy so, I kind of have to roll with that. Yeah. Um, my pick four is going to be Victorious. Um, That's your pick five. Is that my pick five? I swear it. Oh. Okay, that is my... That, wow. Oh, that's tough then. Yeah, I'll, I'll stick with it. Victorious as our pick five. Um, absolutely fantastic show. Unfortunately, I'm going to miss out on a, a couple of shows yet. But that's just because there's so many bangers growing up. Um, Victoria's Victoria Justice, beautiful girl, beautiful girl. Apparently, she's a bit of a bitch, though. <laughs> really? I've been told. Um, but no, it was ac- acting wise fantastic. And uh, what's it called? Ariana Grande was on that show. Yeah, she was a yeah different a, looking then. Such a high pitch voice in that show. It's crazy to see where she's at now. You know, oh, you think like global damn. superstar. Um, damn, I feel like a lot of my list is being taken. It's tough. Um, I'm gonna roll with Tom and Jerry. Wow, great show. Yeah, okay, I used to watch that show every every. I think I swear it was on like every fucking day. But yeah, I don't know. That shit still goes today. I'm pretty sure. I think yeah. they have a movie actually, like a like a new cinema movie, like wow. 2023 kind of vibe. Oh Jesus Christ! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully they haven't ruined it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what they've done now, but yeah. Um, some honorable mentions I'd like to put out there. Good luck, Charlie. That was a great one for me. Big Time Rush. Oh, Big Time Rush. See, this is the thing. I knew I'd forget shows. Big yeah. Time Rush was great. Fantastic show. Um, Fairly Odd Parents. Yeah, that um, was decent. That's So Raven, Zoe 101. There's plenty more out there. Yeah, um, facts. And yeah, it was simpler time in our lives. 100%. When you just... Shit just they don't make shows like this no more. 
Like even for kids, they're like the, you look at kids shows now, they are not even remotely the same. Well, they're, it's kind of like, I don't really know if, you know why? It's because there was no such thing as Disney Plus. There was no such thing as, um, as Netflix back then, as this, as that. It was all Foxtel like It shows. was all just Foxtel shows. Um, like I feel like those networks aren't as big. No, they're um, not. But that's the other thing. Like for a lot of these shows, I would like pretty much have to illegally download them because I didn't have Foxtel. Yeah. yeah. Whereas like that's like my list. Is, like some of these shows on my thing, like I used to watch like The Simpsons. I used to binge watch that like from eight eight years old like yeah and that was on every night on channel 11 i think yeah. it was or whatever and then like i had powerpuff girls as well i actually loved that show on foxtel that yeah. was fucking great yeah um and then what other shows did Hannah i Hannah montana as well that was great Hannah Montana, bro show. like these, these are the things like there's so many shows that are just oh you bastard <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no those meow, um meow again champ the that one was probably one of the harder drafts I've had to um I've had to take part in for quite even some like time. I had Total Drama Island like shit like that I used to watch that Never heard of it. it was on like ABC twenty three or whatever oh, true. true I used to watch that shit all the time but that was kind of a bit when I was like eleven yeah but some guy I'm um, sent into the pod asking for some advice he said hello boys I'm in need of some advice so I'm in a job with good hours he works forty hours a week um six a.m. to two p.m. so that's pretty good hours um but shit money. Uh, 1,600 euro a month. So that's not a lot at all. I don't know what that equates to, but maybe like 2,500 bucks a month, Australian or something like that. Um, but he says, I'm comfortable with that. Like 40 hours a week, 1,600 euros a month. He's comfortable. My brother has offered me a new job with way shitter hours. It'd be 5 a.m. to 5 to 6 p.m. So 12 hour days instead of eight but more money, about three to three and a half thousand euro, which is double what he's on right now. Um, what's that in 12 hour days, five, five twelves, 60. So 60 hours a week instead of 40, but for double the money. Um, my problem is I've got two young kids and if I take the new job, I'll barely see them as I'll leave before they are awake and I won't go home until they're in bed. The new job is closer to my home as I'm traveling 40 minutes to get to work and 40 minutes home from work. Do I step out of the comfy job and miss out on spending time with the kids for a new job? Thanks, boys. Sorry for this being so long. Um, so essentially, my man's in the debacle. Do you want 1,600 euro for 40 hours a week, 60 hours a week work for 3,500 euros? Um, you've got kids. You either see your kids or you don't see your kids. For me personally, if I was in your situation, based off of what you told me, you said you're comfortable, which means probably the missus is comfortable, I would do 40 hours a week and, and, and spend time with my kids, mm. go to footy trainings, raise them. That's, that's me personally, if I was in that sh- situation. Yeah, um, you just got to, in my opinion, you just got to weigh up what's important to you, both short term and long term. Like my dad, he did a lot of travel when I was younger and I didn't see my dad for like three weeks at a time. And that sucked, but he obviously like had to do that to earn that type of money to provide for our family. So it's like, yes, you might not be able to see your kids then, but if it's going to give your family um, a better life in terms of, you know, I mean, financial stress is probably the number one factor in like fucking over families um, in terms of their happiness and just their overall quality of life. So... If it means that you don't see your kids, I mean, you have to weigh that up, whether that's going to be beneficial in the long in the long term. And also, how long are you going to have this job? Um, I just feel like based off of the... That's a question you got to ask yourself as well. I feel like he already answered the question himself though, because he did weigh that up. If you say you are comfortable, like comfortable to me is like... It's comfortable now. You're, you don't have financial stress. Yeah. You're comfortable. Life is decent and you get to see your kids. For me... I would do that. If you're not comfortable, if you said we're earning 1600 bucks a week and we're struggling to put food on the table or pay rent, I would say do the new job because that'll give your kids a better life. Yeah, but I'm, I mean, what I'm thinking is that he's not on great money um, right now. Yeah, he's able to support them um, as they're young, but kids only get more, kids only get, oh, providing for your kids only gets more expensive as they get older. 
Um, so that's obviously going to be a factor as well. You want to send your kids to a good school. This, that, fees, they, it becomes fucking expensive. So It does, but when they're that age, they're not going to bed at 5 p.m. You can get that job then or get a better job then and then they'll be up later anyway, so you'll still see your kids. Oh, of course, but th- these are the things you have to weigh up. Um, yeah, it's not really a question for us to answer for you, mate. you got to decide that with your family. Of um, course. I think in your position. if you're asking us in terms of like saying, the problem is I won't see my kids... I think you've already kind of like, you've already thought about that. Like, you know, you're not going to see your kids and that will suck for you. Like you're, if you're saying that to us, you already know that. So like, think about that. I'd ask your missus as well, mate. (laughs) Well, yeah. (laughs) Cause maybe it doesn't even have probably the most, probably the most um, important uh, factor there. What your, what your missus thinks. Yeah, for sure. But uh, let us know what you do do. And um, at the end of the day, mate, it's, it's your life. So. That is facts. Um, got some other things we can talk about, but I think we'll save it for next week and basically just finish off with our footy tips because that is necessary Yeesh. for the end of the year. I swear so we have... No, no, we've done all the saggies. We have. Nice. All right, round eight, footy tips. What the... Oh, there we go. All right, so Friday night kicks off with an absolute blockbuster here in Melbourne. Potentially could... May end up going to that. It's a very good game. Um, Carlton versus Brisbane at Marvel. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Brisbane get this done. Yeah, I'll back Brisbane too. That'll be a very good game. Could see it going either way. I think Brisbane have hit their strides. Um, Richmond versus your boys, the West Coast Eagles in Melbourne. Yeah, Richmond will get that done. I think so too. Um, Geelong versus Adelaide at GMHBA. I think Geelong will win that. I think they've hit their strides too. Geelong will win that easily in my opinion. Um, Gold Coast versus Melbourne. I'll go Melbourne. Uh, yeah, Melbourne easily do that as well in my opinion. GW West versus Western Bulldogs. Uh, I'm back the doggy. Oh, hmm. I'll go GW West. Yeah, that'll be a... Um, I think that'll be quite a good game. I'll go. I'll go the dogs. I think the dogs will get that done. Um, and then it goes to my boys, Fremantle versus Hawthorne at Optus. I'm going to tip Frio to get their second win. Yeah, Third I think win? Frio, I Frio should win that game. Should win that game. Um, Sunday, Port Adelaide versus Essendon. What a cracker. I'll back Port in yeah, Adelaide. Yeah, Port will win in Adelaide for sure. Another good game or potential to be a good game. Collingwood versus Sydney. Collingwood for me. Can't tip against them at home. And then North versus St. Kilda at Marvel. Yeah, no, uh, North will get smoked. At St. Kilda will win that. Yeah, I think Saints should probably get that done they'll too. Ba- they'll bounce back too. Um, so yeah, that is probably the show. We had plenty to talk about today. We did, we did. Um, let us know your thoughts. Please like, if you're watching on YouTube, please like the video, share it, comment what you thought, comment your opinions on the things that we talked about, the segments, blah, 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 and also what you want to see. Go watch our vlog. Go watch the vlog with Chucky Dan. That'll be linked in the description. Um, And yeah, hope you have a great day and rest of your week. Yes, sir. Goodbye. Peace.